for attending today's webinar. Uh, today we're pleased here at Hard Dollar to be doing this webinar with About Time Technologies to talk about mobile field data collection, the About Time connectivity with HDPCM. My name is John Garay. I'm the Director of Product Marketing. And with me here today from About Time Technologies is David Perry, their Regional Vice President of Sales. Um, when we're introducing and thinking about this concept of uh, working together, uh, it's actually a key part of what Hard Dollar is all about. So let's go through and uh, let's go through and take a look at this topic. So what we'll be going over today is to talk about the connection. Um, the real-time connection between the About Time timesheet program, the integration with HDPCM, the workflow, a little more about Hard Dollar, and then have time at the end to talk about your questions. So let's talk about business issues here. And these are business issues that face uh, companies across industries, but especially in the construction industry, in dealing with field personnel working uh, and doing the project effort within the field and the need to bring data back. So a key issue when we talk to customers is the issue of leveraging, uh, of getting better visibility into what is actually happening with their projects. That visibility is key to decision making because it helps to avoid surprises uh, by eliminating the lag between what's going on in the field and what gets reported within the home office. Another key concept, and this is key to the overall hard dollar position in the marketplace, is the idea of being able to use the right tool for the right job, which means that each tool and the connectivity between those tools becomes a key focus of everything that we do at, here at Hard Dollar. And it's part of the reason why we're having today's webinar and the reason why we work with other systems uh, to make sure that you, our customers, have the ability to use the right tool for the different jobs that you do. And what that leads to and what that enables is performance. Uh, when it comes down to it, if everybody is able to use the tools within that project system that best suits the purpose, yet you still have the connectivity between the different systems, that's the best way to get the performance that you need, the visibility you need, um, so that you can be more effective and successful with both the initiation and the execution of your projects. Because when it comes down to it, disconnected, disconnected data and processes create the inconsistencies and errors. Nobody wants that. Uh, it does create problems uh, with the projects. So of course, uh, the reason why we're here today, the solution is integration between the different systems. This is a visual way to present the solution of Hard Dollar and our project cost management solution and how it brings together systems across the project life cycle from takeoff all the way to accounting and back office things um, for the different key stakeholders on the right side, the different key stakeholders within the organization. So you can see here timesheet and timesheet data is a key part of the data that flows into the project cost management system that gives the, to give the visibility and control needed to be more effective with your overall projects. Which is why we're having this webinar today with About Time. And at this point, I'd like to hand it over to David, who will walk you through more about About Time and the combination with Hard Dollar Solutions. David? 
All right, thank you, John. I, I appreciate the uh, the introduction there and, and the opportunity to show uh, about time and our integration with uh, HDPCM. Uh, I'm pretty excited to be here. I, it's genuine excitement, so I'll really try to contain myself and, and you know not get too hyped up and, and talk too fast. But um, you know, I came from the world of construction, and so did most of the people in our company. I, I was in construction back in the '80s, which kind of dates me here. But uh, if we had something like uh, HDPCM back then and about time, boy, we would have been much more successful here. And I'm in California where uh, uh, you know, margins are very narrow to begin with, with all the compliance we have. But um, uh, if we had something like this, man, it would have been a different story in the, in the organization I worked for. So I'm really excited to be here. So let's go ahead and get rolling on the about time piece. OK, uh, the number one thing that we figured when building this product, and, and let me start off by saying we were founded by two contractors and two software engineers that saw not only a need in the industry, but a need in their own businesses, the two contractors. Uh, they were just bleeding, to, to, to be quite frank. And this was back in the early 2000s, before mobile was mobile. There was, you know, there was the Palm Pilot, there was Pocket PC, and that was about it. So there wasn't really that connectivity that you, uh, that you can you know, enjoy nowadays with smartphones and tablets and things of that nature. But they did have the foresight, the two contractors, to really push simplicity. Um, guys in the field, they're very intelligent. They're sharp. Don't let them fool you if, if they're trying to, because they're very sharp guys. But they need something that's very simple to get through quickly and, um, and get to the data that they need and, and track the crews the way that they need to. It needs to be fast, and it needs to be really easy. So even over the years, um, as you know, we're a very customer-driven product, but even as we've pushed to put more and more features and more and more capabilities into the system, we pushed as hard as heck to keep it as simple for people in the field as possible, yet give you a very powerful back end to integrate with systems like HDPCM and, uh, and many, many ERP systems. And we'll get into that next. So um, what, what About Time will give you is a rear view rather than, uh, than, a, than a, or excuse me, a windshield rather than a rear view mirror. It does the company no good to see a pillar of smoke in a rear view mirror that's two weeks old and they can do nothing about it. it it's, 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 it's dead and gone. It's history. This will give you a windshield to actually operate your business in real time and feed this data to HDPCM, which will give you all the data you need to make the critical decisions that are crucial as your, uh, as your project is unfolding in front of you. Now, About Time also integrates, as I mentioned, with HDPCM. We also do with, uh, with many of the, the payroll service providers. We do with some of the top tier ERP systems like Viewpoint, uh, Spectrum, um, Sage, uh, everything from Oracle all the way down to QuickBooks and everything in between. In fact, we're integrating with over, I think it's about 100. We're, close, we're closing in on 120 different third party systems. So integration is one of our specialties and where we really um, have, uh, have set ourselves apart from the other time and attendance products out there. Now, another thing that, that About Time will give you is, uh, is, is not only an integration with your ERP system and uh, HDPCM, but will also give the field a lot of visibility. Uh, I love, John, that you started off with, with really pounding visibility. Because when I first got into this, uh, I worked for two of our competitors, unfortunately, before I had the, the, uh, the foresight to, and, and the intelligence to go ahead and switch over to About Time about four years ago. Um, when I first entered this industry of, of you know, remotely capturing field data, uh, the, the big push then was, I want to catch my cheating workers. I want to, you know, I'm, I know I'm losing about 40 minutes per guy per day, and I want to stop that. I want to verify that it's the right guy at the right time, at the right place. I want to verify this with biometrics, and I want to do it with GPS, and I want to know. Well, that, that still is the case for many companies, but the big thing is that visibility you mentioned, John. It's, it's so powerful, um, and, and not only will About Time pull this data in in real time, give it to the field to, or to the office to, to view and consume and, and understand. But it will also, at the same time that they sync the data from the device in the field to the office, it'll push back you know, how they're doing on the job. They're percent complete. Are they under? Are they over? It'll break down what they're doing per hour. Given that feedback, each cost code, which the, with the estimated amounts that it should take to complete, plus the production units that it will take to complete, as that accrues, it it, uh, it 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 you know configures in the office and then pushes it back out to the field and gives them visibility as you can see even here on a, on an iPhone on a small device. 
all the visibility they need. Very, very powerful. So now to give you an idea of how about time works, first off I'll mention we do pull information from either hard dollar or from your ERP system, wherever it's supposed to come through first. Different customers do it in different ways. We'll pull, pull it from wherever we need to get it from. We can restrict that data down and present it to the field so you know the right foreman sees the right job, the right crews. The cost codes are job specific, so they'll just see the cost codes that are relevant to that particular project. So an individual can go ahead and put in a four or five digit pin code. The next screen, it could be a very simple workflow where they just have an in and an out button. They, they clock in, they go to work. And, and our buttons are nice and big, even guys with, with gigantic hot dog fingers from years of, of you know, abuse out in the field can clock in. In fact, at the uh, last hard dollar roundup for my demonstration, I actually clocked in with my elbow on my iPad. So the buttons are that big, it's that simple, green for in, red for out. Very, very straightforward. Now there can also be other workflows. We have some customers that will have office employees to track. They'll have um, you know, a shop with mechanics. They'll have a new construction division, maybe doing heavy highway work out in the field. And then they'll have guys who, uh, who do deliveries. So they'll have drivers traveling around. All these different crews and different people and, and different, uh, uh, need different workflows. So we have created a very flexible system to handle those workflows. And this one you can see here, uh, a worker would enter a pin code. They would clock in, very menu driven. The next screen appears right away. They can choose a task that's applicable to that particular project. They can even uh, clock onto equipment or put in production units or both. So very uh, powerful, menu driven, really quick to get to the, through the system. And even if you're doing like three or four screens, it still takes about five seconds to get on the clock and track all that information in real time. If there's a connection, that data feeds over to the office. If not, about time works in complete disconnect mode. You can be in an igloo in the frozen tundra. You could be in a cornfield in Nebraska, or you could be in the basement of a high-rise building doing work and still operate the system in complete real time, filling out form data, tracking your crews, taking job site photos, creating field notes, doing everything in complete real time. And then when you have a connection, you can go ahead and sync up with the office. I also wanted to mention the, the crew entry. Uh, a lot of our customers, in, rather than have the individual employees clock in, uh, they'll go ahead and have a crew leader do it. So the crew leader can put in his or her PIN code. They'll see a list of their employees. As you can see here, they appear at the top, already checked off. I can have a bunch of other employees if I need to clock them in, if they show up on my job site. But my guys, it's going to remember them. It's going to put them at the top. So all I have to do is hit the in button and get those guys off to work. I could choose the cost code in real time, or I can do end of the day allocation. About Time's created a very, very simple way to take a start and a stop time, break it down to as many cost codes as, the, as are applicable, and then also take that allocation and add it to any other employees or group of employees. So again, simplicity, menu driven, get you through the system fast. Another feature that comes with About Time that really helps with that, uh, that verification, know where people are and that they're at the right place at the right time, and this can even help, we've seen with many of our customers, um, help with disputes from their customers when they say, you know, your, your guys weren't here. They, yeah, I know they said they were here, but they weren't here. Well, we, we've got a GPS stamp showing exactly where they were standing when they started this work. Uh, that can also go with warranty work. We've seen with many of our customers who do roofing and, and things of that nature, and there's a warranty on that work. Well, here's the GPS verification of where we did the work, where we clocked in. Now, here's a job site photo showing you where exactly we did the work. I'm sorry, but the leak wasn't here, it was 150 feet over there, so this is a new project rather than warranty work. It's very powerful, the GPS verification. So there's no subscription fees. We actually just tap into the internal GPS on the mobile devices, and we go right to the satellite rather than the cellular triangulation, so it's far more accurate, and it works in disconnect mode, just like the rest of the About Time app. So you'll still be able to grab real-time data entry, GPS verification, and um, with or without you know, a Wi-Fi signal, a data plan, or an air cart. And it comes complete with maps. Um, there's also um, some alerts and notifications that are built in around the GPS to let you know if a crew leader clocked in his crew or an individual clocked in away from the job site. Uh, there's also, you know, you can go right down to the street level on the maps within our system, and it'll give you uh, exactly how far away they were from the job site when that transaction did occur. And I should mention here, because this is a very powerful component of About Time. I don't have a slide for this, so we'll just leave it on this slide. Actually, you know what? I'll go to that slide. 
About Time uh, recently introduced a complete alerts and notifications module to really help people, especially like project managers and superintendents who don't have the time to ne necessarily sit and stare at a screen and look for issues happening on their jobs. So what we did is built an alerts and notifications module that will tell you when things are happening on the job site that maybe you should be aware of, such as maybe um, budgets have come within a predetermined percentage. Um, it'll send out an alert to the project manager, whoever you can figure that to go to. Or an employee said overtime, you want to know, hey, this, this is one of my most expensive guys. Maybe I should leave him at home tomorrow because we just have general labor the next day. Uh, there's all sorts of notifications. If a job site photo came in, if field notes came in, uh, if weather's impacting your job site. So all sorts of alerts that allow your money makers to more manage by exception than sitting and spending their time staring at a screen. So this is an important part of the system that I wanted to go ahead and mention. So at this time, I'm going to fire up my iPad here and go ahead and connect it through Wi-Fi to my PC. And as most of you know, in the real world, um, uh, Apple and, and, and Windows don't play so well in the same sandbox. So just give me a second here because it looks like it disconnected. I do still have a Wi-Fi connection, so it, sh it should just take a second to go ahead and fire it up. I use an app called Reflector, if any of you have heard of that before. OK, it looks like it just connected. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that up here as soon as it loads. And there it is. OK, so there's my iPad right here on my desk. OK, so you can see About Time is an icon running right there. Now, this is native to this. Excuse me? We don't see it. We see the slide still. OK, tell me when you can see it, John. OK, now I can see it. Perfect. OK, so you can see here, About Time is an icon running right in the app. And that's important. That's how we're able to run in disconnect mode. Many of the other time and attendance systems out there, or time collection systems, uh, they'll, they'll write one app, and then they'll lay it across all the devices. You need a browser to get it to work, or even if it's in a, a different language, it has a store and push, and, or whatever that is, it, it, it doesn't really work so well. About Time is a native app running on each device. And we actually, our developers have created separate apps for the iPad as opposed to the iPhone, as opposed to, as opposed to the Android and the Android tablets. So therefore, the screen resolution is, is perfect. Everything renders well. It's not pixelated like a Super Mario game. Everything looks good and, and runs the way that it should. There's no pulling the screen around and trying to shrink down or enlarge it. Everything renders per perfectly on the device. So I'll tap the icon. That'll bring up About Time. Uh, you can see we intentionally modeled this after an ATM. Since most people here in 2014 have used an ATM, gotten 20 bucks out, in fact, um, uh, one of our founders had actually gone to an ATM when they were coming up with the idea for About Time and took pictures of each of the steps, brought that back to the developers and said, it's got to be easier than this. It's as simple as this, but if you can make it easier with less steps, we're in business. And that's what we set out to do, and I think we've accomplished that. So I'll show you uh, just a, a few different scenarios. The first one is just a simple person. They put in their four-digit PIN code. Maybe this is the performance device. They handed it to them. They hit the end button. They go to work about three seconds. I've grabbed their GPS coordinates. If they have a connection, like you can see I do here with my Wi-Fi, the office already sees that transaction. I'll do one other person who does an individual entry to show you some capabilities here. I'll put in their four-digit PIN code. I've given them the ability to create a field note that they can record with their voice. Maybe they're going to request some PTO or, or explain something about what's going on on the job site. Also given them a button to change the job if they want before they clock in. So now if this person chooses in, they see a list of the, uh, of the cost codes that are applicable to that project. Now let me back out and show you uh, one other thing. If I change the job and go to a different job here, such as the, uh, the LAX Radisson parking structure, if I choose in, you see I see a different list of cost codes. These are job specific coming right out of, out of hard dollar or out of the ERP system, wherever we're pulling the data from. So now another cool thing that I'm going to do is I'll choose excavation export fill. And I know, because I set the system up, <laughs> that that particular cost code is tied to equipment. So now, in a menu-driven fashion, if this guy is authorized to operate equipment, he'll see a list of equipment. If he's not, he doesn't see that list. So I can jump onto an excavator here. And then you'll see in this final screen, I get a confirmation, the date and the time they're running, the employee. I got the job I'm working on. I've got the task and then the assets. So all of those are getting that time until I go ahead and change it. And now one of the very powerful aspects of About Time is if I were going to clock into a different task or cost code, 
or different piece of equipment, I do not have to clock out of the last piece of equipment in cost code. I just clock into the next, about time knows to end my time there, and move it to the next task, the next piece of equipment. So maybe I'm going to go ahead and, and, and clock into travel time. And off I go. I could also be prompted to put in production units when I clock out at the end of the day, or I go ahead and, um, and um, or, or if I change cost codes. So you see here, I'll go ahead and clock this guy out. This is really important for many of our states in the country have compliance, especially here in California, where we have to acknowledge that we took all of our paid breaks, that we took our lunch, that we weren't hurt on the job site. Uh, you know, that the wind wasn't blowing too hard, whatever it is. The compliance in California is just crazy. And look out, because crazy things start in California, then they move across the country. So just warning you. So if I go to clock out, I can be prompted with asking for maybe how many cubic yards of topsoil I've stripped or whatever it might be. So I can go ahead and plug those in. That's going to feed over to hard dollar. Really powerful. You can also ask feedback questions like, uh, did you, were you, were you, I certify I took all my meal periods and paid breaks today. I could ask how many paid breaks did you take. I could ask if you were hurt on the job site. They're optional, and you can have as many questions as you want. They can have a yes or no value for the answer or a numeric value. So there's just a look, a quick look at uh, at the individual entry by people. There's a lot, of, a lot of different workflows that can be incorporated. Again, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, we can even restrict it down so that uh, employees only see the cost codes that are relevant to them, and it overrides the job-specific ones. So maybe they're a truck driver or whatever. They want to see their cost codes, not the job cost codes. Uh, just a lot of capabilities built into the system. Now let's quickly take a look at the foreman. I'll put in his four-digit PIN code. You can see he has a different look, different options. He's got Forms Express here where you can fill out forms uh, for change orders, for daily logs. Oh gosh, for uh, for safety checklists, for new hire forms, for accident reports, whatever it may be, a very simple and quick way to create field notes with either recording with a voice or typing it in. Again, those will send out alerts to people in the office, whoever you configure it to go to, and will be a permanent part of that job history. And the records manager screen, we can allocate time at the end of the day to different cost codes after the fact. Can have employees approve their time right on the uh, the touch screen device and, and sign with their finger also have managers do that. Uh, spot check, where you can go through and see who's on the clock. And depending on your, uh, you know, your privileges, whether the foreman can change start and stop times, or, or delete times, or add times, or, um, or uh, you know, um, change cost codes and equipment, and, and set units after the fact. In the employee manager, I can see emergency contact information for employees, authorized per diem, things of that nature. In the location manager, um, I can see job site information. Uh, task code budgets, and some other information that we're going to look at in just a moment. And at the top here, clock in or out for my crew. So here's the three guys I clocked in yesterday. If one of them wasn't here, I can go ahead and deselect them and add anybody else from the crew down here. It could be a long list, or this, this could be restricted down to just who's authorized to be on that job site. Whatever you wish, a lot of capabilities there. But if everyone's here, just tap the in button. And then as also as part of the workflow, uh, depending on what you, you want to see, if you have different phases on this particular project, or if this foreman's in charge of different job sites, or if this is a driver maybe, you want to prompt them, hey, do you want to change your job or not? If they say yes, it will go ahead and bring up a list of the jobs, and they can go ahead and say, yeah, we're going to go ahead and go into that LAX Radisson parking structure job. And I could clock everyone into the same cost code. Maybe we're all traveling there, so I want to start logging travel time or drive time. Or maybe I'm just clocking everyone in, and I'm going to add their cost codes later on, or allocate it at the end of the day. I do get a confirmation screen, as you saw with when I was clocking individual employees in. If they see they made a mistake, just hit the cancel button. It allows them to reselect their employees or their codes, whatever it might be, or hitting accept. Again, we'll grab a GPS fix on their coordinates. If they have a connection, it will feed it back to the office. If not, it stores on the device, and you can go ahead and, uh, and you know, sync up later. Um, but, uh, but that gets everyone on the clock. And, and I slowed it down. It takes about five seconds to get all your guys on the clock. Again, it's very, very quick, very simple. Now, one other thing while we're still here in the manager screen, I wanted to show the location manager. There's some powerful things in here. One is the task budget screen. So I can tap on that. It's going to show me all my budgets. That's not such a good job. I'm going to look at a different job. I keep going back to this LAX Radisson parking structure job. There we go. That has some data in it. So here's all my cost codes on the left that came out of the ERP system, or HD. And here's all the budget amounts that the estimator said it should take. 
as time accrues, it's going to show me that. It's going to show me my over and under and my percentage of completion. In the middle, if you're doing production units, I just tap on that. It's going to show me all my original units that it should take for each of these cost codes, what's accrued, again, my over and under, and percentage of completion. And then there's a summary button also. If I choose that, that's going to really break it down to what we're doing per hour and our percentage of completion. And then also show me the total budgeted, total accrued, total remaining, and the percentage of completion. Again, that, that feedback happens every time they sync. There's no reason to send out a report or, or call up the foreman. It's right there on his device. It's optional if you want to send it out. Some customers don't, but most do because it's extremely powerful to keep those guys on, uh, on task and on target. Another thing here is uh, photos. We do photos very, very well. There's no reason for an SD card or, or a separate device to take pictures or we're getting the foreman to send them in from his iPhone or his Android phone. Uh, they just snap the photo, it date and time stamps it, they can put in the description, any notes, it feeds back over to about time, it becomes part of our reporting system, and gives you an accurate history of everything that happened on that job site. And we can also track equipment time after the fact. So we'll pull the equipment over, we can assign it, it'll be on this device, it'll be applicable to this job, or to this device, or this foreman, or that employee, however you want to go ahead and assign that. And then they can go ahead and, uh, and put in their units, their... Um, you know, their, uh, their, their, their meter readings, the time of usage, they can uh, log a cost code against it and an employee and put any applicable notes in also. Again, that also feeds over to HDPCM. Okay, I won't go through all the features here. Uh, we, you know, probably want to do a one-on-one -on -one demonstration to show you some of the other functionality in about time. So I'm going to go ahead and jump back over to, uh, to the PowerPoint. And there's uh, a number of other ways to authenticate employees. Uh, one of the most popular ways is through biometrics with About Time, but we can also do PIN code entry, uh, card swipe or, or, or barcode scanning, uh, also RFID, and, uh, and of course the biometrics that, uh, that we have thousands and thousands of employees clocking in through About Time every single day. The way we're able to do this and have it so successful in the field, which biometrics didn't used to be successful in the field. There was optical readers that took a picture of the finger, compared it to what was originally on file. So if the finger was dirty or scratched up, it's not going to look the same. It's, it's not going to get a good reading. So we've partnered with a company that does uh, three-dimensional capacitive reading on fingers that reads through the second layer of epidermis, reads the vein structure in the finger. So there's not actually a fingerprint on file. The, the, um, you know, the FBI couldn't come to me and say, hey, John from Hard Dollar is wanted for bank robbery. We need to see his fingerprint. We, we can't do that. It's an algorithm. It's a series of characteristics that we're identifying within the finger. So, um, so yeah, it just reads right through that fingerprint. So it's ideal for, for fingers that have been working all day in the field that are dusty, hard to read. We have customers in, uh, in heavy highway, customers in mining, customers in, uh, in roofing, in drywall, every vertical of construction uh, using our, uh, our biometrics. And the FBI uses it too. That's a kind of a better picture of what it looks like, but it is the one and only way to ensure that that employee is exactly who they say they are when they're clocking in, and it's also a quick and easy way to get employees on the clock. And then again, that time could be allocated at the end of the day, after the fact, or done in real time, or done throughout the day, either way. Um, as another option, some of our customers, as an interim step to get to real time, because there's so much power behind real time, getting this data back to the office and into HDPCM, you can't beat it. If you're relying on a guy at the end of the week to go ahead and put his time into a timesheet, you're not that much better off than if you just did it on paper. It's, yeah, you, you take out a bunch of steps and it automates things and, and it's all digital and that's great, so we can handle it. But man, there's nothing like real-time data. Uh, once you get, just get past the idea of, hey, my guys have never clocked in, yeah, but half the world has, more than half the world has, and construction guys do too. And there's thousands of about time customers doing it. Um, it's, it, it's, it, it's so powerful. But we still can allow for digital timesheet entry if you wish. We can put in equipment time. They can put in their units. We can allocate at the end of the day. It works on the Apple devices, Android devices, Windows devices. So if this is in, 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 an interim step to real time, we can do it. Or if this is the way you want to do it, we can definitely do it. And, and I don't mean to say that to insult anyone at all, uh, because there's sometimes that, that a, a timesheet just has to be used. But boy, if you can get to real time, I'm telling you, you will never look back. Your foreman will appreciate it because they don't have to sit down at the end of the week and try and recreate their whole week and figure out where was this guy, where was that guy. 
I can't even remember what I had for lunch yesterday unless I really sit down and think about it. And, and, and so the idea of thinking last Monday what 30 guys did on my crew, it's virtually impossible, but we can still accommodate that if that's the, the route you need to go. Uh, another feature that I wanted to mention that's really powerful because a lot of our customers are very large, they have extremely large job sites, or they're on a stretch of road that, that, that's several miles long. Um, uh, one of the, the, the features that comes with about time that sets us apart is a worker can clock in or out on any device. They don't have to return back to that same device to clock out. That's quite different than other systems. Most other systems require an in and an out on each and every device. So a guy can go through a choke point or an entry point or a gate, uh, maybe clock in with his fingerprint and, uh, and, and then report to his foreman over here, and the foreman can clock him in on maybe his iPad or his, his Android phone or his laptop or whatever into whatever function he wants to clock him into. And then maybe he finishes day, his day you know, several hours later over here and clocks out on this iPhone. When all those devices sync and go back to the office or the satellite office, wherever it is, wherever we configure it to go, the data runs through a compiler that will marry all those records together and give you a complete day with how long it took them to get from point A to point B to point C. Um, all that data right there in front of you, all compiled together, whether he clocked in over here and clocked out over there, it doesn't matter at all comes together and gives you one time card. Now another feature I wanted to mention that's, uh, that's a little bit outside of, of time and attendance is, uh, is Forms Express. We introduced this um, at the beginning of last year. It won the most innovative product award at, at uh, World of Concrete. Um, and basically what it does is allows you to eliminate the rest of the paper. We've got paper out of the equation for timesheets, the natural progression, progression that our customers requested was, hey, I've got all these forms, I've got change orders, I've got daily logs, I've got accident reports, I've got vehicle inspection lists, I've got to, uh, to have my employees agree that they were at the safety meeting and the topic that we discussed. I need all these forms. We've got boxes and boxes uh, of banker boxes which are storing these things. We've got filing cabinets. It's a mess. What can you do? So we developed Forms Express. And it basically allows you to build the template back in the office for whatever forms they fill out and then we sync that out to the field. And instead of actually filling out a form like on a little iPhone or, or an Android phone or a tablet or whatever it might be, we just ask them a series of questions that will populate the form in the background. So you ask the question, then you determine what kind of answer it can be. That might be a multiple choice answer. That might be a yes or no value, a true or false. It might be a list of materials. If they select the material, then the next question is how many did you use? What did you charge the customer? You determine what those questions are and what the answers can be. So it makes it much more easy, much easier for a, an employee to fill it out in the field because they're just simply answering the question rather than trying to, to fill this out and, and, and add all these uh, descriptions in there. You can decide what the descriptions are. They just select what it is. So very powerful, and it goes far beyond what paper can do because you can take job site photos that are embedded in the forms. You can do video that's embedded in the forms, uh, uh, voice notes the GPS verification of where the form was filled out, grab customer signatures, employee signatures, form and signatures, all right there in a digital form. Then they, from the device, they can print that out, they can email it, or of course it syncs back to the office where it's permanently attached to that project. Even after you close it out, you've got all your information there chronicled all together in one place for your forms, all your labor that was on that project, any job site photos, weather information, all this contained in one place. So it'll take a form that looks like this, all handwritten, almost impossible to read. I mean, I had to call the customer back up and ask what the, oh, that's zip blades? That says trash bags? I had no idea. What on earth does that say? And they actually said to me, you know, I don't know. I don't know what that says. And they, they were taking these forms. At the end of the day, they were coming in from 38 different foremen. This is just one of the forms. And a girl in, or a couple of girls in the office had to type them up and then send them to the customer. It was a nightmare. Now they get a clean, nice, concise form that's easy to read. They can just forward that right to the customer. Now, the last piece that I wanted to go ahead and, and talk about was the control center and the integration with HDPCM. Now, the control center is a very powerful part of the system. It'll give you dashboards uh, to show you how your budgets are doing before they get to PCM. Uh, it's just kind of a view. It doesn't show you quite the information, all the powerful information that PCM does, but it's a quick read to give you an idea of where things are. There's a live weather dashboard, uh, the top 25 jobs by man hours, 
Um, there's a number of different dashboards and also uh, managers to show you um, job site photos, um, field notes that have come in, different things like that. Um, but once all the time has been looked at, uh, uh, you can go ahead and send that right over to PCM. But there are, as I mentioned earlier, some very powerful alerts and notifications that will tell you if, uh, you know, if, if weather was impacting the job site or if job site photos came in or if the budgets were within a pre predetermined percentage. Um, so the, all that information is, is right there and giving you those alerts to, to go ahead and let you know when things are, are going awry on the job site. Um, there's also uh, the, the ability in the About Time system to schedule our reports. So uh, one of the most powerful reports before you go ahead and send this data over to HDPCM is a, a pending records report. Make sure that everybody clocked in and everybody clocked out. After the first week or so, people get used to it. They know their, their, their paychecks tied to that you know, hitting that button and clocking in or clocking out at the end of the day. So that clears up pretty quickly, but it's still important to have, you know, access to that data and visibility immediately to know who forgot to clock in or clock out. So once all the data has been re reconciled, it's pretty much ready to go over to PCM. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and show you that integration now. Okay, there we go. Let me go ahead and bring that up, and we'll get this started here. Okay, so what you're looking at now is the time editor in About Time, where all the time has come into, where you go ahead and reconcile everything. You can see that I've got one record highlighted there uh, for mobilization for October 17th, and this is on the uh, hard dollar training job under uh, under the under the Marcelo Casalda. But we're going to go ahead and send a bunch of data over. You can see the asset down at the bottom there. It's Rig 10, and we put in 10 production units for that particular record. So now what we're going to do is import this over to uh, HDPCM. So you can see their mobilization, and we're going to go ahead and send that data over. So what we would do is go to the about time side and choose the Payroll Express. I'm going to do this on the HD training job. And, um, and so I just hit the export button. So you can see that there's all the records. And just like that, there's 44 records that were exported. And we're going through the, the API on hard dollars. So you can see there's no import-export process. So now we'll look at that mobilization uh, task there. We're going to go ahead and look at, we've got 39 hours, man hours, uh, 23 hours of equipment. We've got 65 uh, production units. We, we were looking at the one record there, but this includes all the records. So we've got everything all together. So now let's go ahead and drill down. And we're going to actually see all those records. And just like that, all that powerful information is sent right over to HDPCM. You're going to know that same day exactly where you're at on the project extremely powerful and very, very simple. And as you saw, with a couple of clicks of a button, that information is right there in HDPCM. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and send this back over to John, um, and, uh, and then uh, he'll go ahead and wrap things up, and we'll see if there's any questions afterwards. So John, I'm going to go ahead and pass the baton to you. All right, thank you, David, um, and definitely you can see the flexibility of your tool in gathering that information and bringing it into the HDPCM system. And as this slide has in front of you right now, um, you can't manage what you don't measure. So of course, getting that level of detail about what's actually going on in the field and bringing that into the HDPCM system is a key way of controlling your projects um, and having the visibility that you need. Uh, pretty interesting stuff there. Thank you, John. So there's a good amount of people on the call today, and I know some of the folks on uh, are very familiar with Hard Dollar, um, but there's probably some on this call as well who are not as familiar with Hard Dollar, maybe more familiar with About Time. So at this point, just give a few uh, slides here about um, Hard Dollar and the solutions that we offer. So for a little background, uh, Hard Dollar has been working in this industry for 25 years now. Uh, actually, we're about a month or two away from our 25th anniversary. So it's um, our tools, uh, just like About Time was built uh, based upon a need in the marketplace uh, for different tools. The same with Hard Dollar. Uh, our tools were created uh, to specifically serve um, the needs of the estimating and more recently 
expanding beyond that into the whole project cost management field. So our tools are built on this 25 years of experience. As I mentioned, the project cost management, uh, which is the bringing together of information from multiple systems during project ex execution is a key part of our overall solution. So tying in with obviously field data collection, but also in terms of scheduling data, in terms of accounting and ERP systems, and then keeping that tied to the estimate is all part of that project cost management uh, function. Hard dollar solutions, and we've been um, pleased over the years to expand beyond the construction focus, which of course is our base, um, to bring our solutions to customers that still need estimating and project cost management, but are in a variety of different industries. So you can see on this, uh, power and process industries, utilities, uh, mining companies uh, throughout the world actually use hard dollar solutions. Oil and gas, um, there's many differences between companies in each of these industries, but there are enough similarities and our tool is flexible enough to make hard dollar solutions a, um, a strong solution within each of those different industries. What this leaves us at is, and we regularly go through our customer list and figure this out, we have more than 20,000 users worldwide of hard dollar solutions. That's in over 500 companies in more than 25 different, I'm sorry, 24 different countries. Uh, that's active use as of right now. Um, so this is definitely a prevalent solution that we've brought to help customers around the world better manage their projects. As I mentioned earlier, integration is a key part of what makes project cost management work. So I mentioned accounting and ERP, and those are the ones that I'm showing here. Um, we partner with Oracle. I know many of our customers and probably many of you have uh, Oracle Primavera as part of your solution. We have partnered with them to make integration, uh, very tight integration between our systems. Um, we're actually upgrading that uh, in an upcoming release, the HD PCM 13 release. We take it even further. So it's a key focus of us, um, of our development efforts, is to link together uh, with other systems. SAP is another key partner of Hard Dollar. Uh, we have created solutions that work with the core ERP system, and we've created other systems that also work with SAP as the key part of the combination. So let's take a look just briefly at HDPCM. Before hard dollar project cost management, when it came down to it, there were many different systems, project driven systems throughout the life cycle, uh, from takeoff all the way to accounting along the way, that all had key information that was relevant to owners, to contractors, and to the EPCM companies. Um, so building and figuring out how to bring all those things together is a key focus of PCM. And that's what Hard Dollar is all about, is taking these different systems throughout the life cycle, combining them so that the information is in one place, uh, reconciled across the different systems and consistent and providing the information with all the key stakeholders. Uh, it's a key way to get the visibility that you need and the confidence that the numbers that you're looking at for your projects um, are the true numbers. They're consistent across all of those different systems. So that's what I had uh, about Hard Dollar. And as you saw here, um, the combinations with other systems is a key part. At this point, we'd like to open it up for questions. I know there were some questions that came in during 
uh, which we will get to here. If you haven't asked a question yet, please be sure to use the question functionality within the uh, GoToWebinar interface and we'll go through those all. So actually I'm seeing lots of questions come in, so let's just work through them here. Um, first of all, will About Time integrate smoothly with Primavera P6? Uh, and they say field data entry using Primavera is becoming critical in our company. I'll hand this over to David. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, you know, each system is set up differently, so that's something we'd want to definitely go through a thorough discovery process with you to find out exactly what needs to be pulled over and how it needs for, to be presented. But yeah, as I mentioned before, uh, well over 100 different uh, separate third-party systems. So yeah, we just want to dig in a little bit with you and find out what you want to bring over. But the capabilities are certainly there. All right, thank you. Next one, can you attach design plans to the mobile device within about time and add notes to them? Um, I probably need a little bit more clarity on that. There are some, there is some functionality that we're working on to include uh, PDFs and, and, and drawings and different things within the system. Right now, we currently allow you to send over project information as well as notes and, uh, and descriptions and things of what need to be performed on the job. Probably need to look a little bit uh, deeper at that, but, um, but that functionality is something we're currently working on and, and is in our roadmap. All right, thank you. Um, is, this webinar, <laughs> is this webinar available as a recording to share with my team? I can answer that one. I'll let you take uh, yeah, that one, John. <laughs> <laughs> the easy one, sorry. Um, yes, we are recording this webinar, um, and we will be sending around a link to this recording as soon as we get it processed and uploaded, which should be either later today or by this time tomorrow. Um, so that will be on its way to you. So next question is, does About Time have a European user base? Actually, we do have cust uh, some European customers. We sure do. So, um, so yeah, also in Canada, um, uh, we just recently did another one in uh, Costa Rica that we're rolling out right now. So yeah, we're, we're pretty international as, as we're moving forward. All right, thank you. What a, what accounting software program does About Time interface with? We're currently shopping for a new accounting software program. Wow, uh, yeah, that's, boy, uh, <laughs> I think pretty much anything in our space, meaning uh, the verticals that we all are, work within, uh, you're probably going to be covered with About Time, whether it's anything from Microsoft Dynamics to uh, SAP to Oracle to Viewpoint uh, to Sage 300, um, you're going to be covered. I think that's one we should probably take offline. We can give you some some of the uh, the top programs that uh, are being utilized with About Time, but I, I think you're pretty safe with any almost any ERP system that the construction companies use. We more than likely have touched their database and are currently integrating. All right, thank you. Are there any other questions? I think we got through the initial batch. Um, I'm just going through and typing responses. Um, here's another one that just came in, David. I understand okay. this covers well for time. How about for material and quantities? Yeah, yeah, we do, um, we do quantities. Um, it depends on how you want to track material. So most of our customers do it through Forms Express because you can include a list of materials. You can uh, ask how many were used or what was charged. Um, so yeah, we can we can accommodate that absolutely. Sometimes it's within Forms Express. Other times it can be within the core product. Uh, it just depends on how you're tracking it and where you're sending that data to. But um, again, it's, it's it's funny because you know we can line up five Oracle users who are all in the same vertical, maybe doing heavy highway, and they all are basically tracking the same information, but not one of them track it the same way or integrate it with Oracle the same way. It's very <laughs> Very, very strange, but that's when we have project managers on staff. That's when we have the technical engineers and our developers so that we can work with our customers and take the five different ways we've created to do every single thing on the planet and apply the right one to each company and get the right workflows and, and, and keep that flexibility in place. So, um, so yeah, we probably just need a little more information of how they track that, but chances are yes, absolutely. 
All right, thank you. Here's another one. Uh, do the resources that are used in about time come from the hard dollar library or the particular hard dollar job? Wow, you, you, you stumped me on that one. Um, we do have uh, Mike Merrill, our COO, on the line, but I'm not sure if he's even privy to that, that deep of, of technological uh, uh, exploration, <laughs> if you will. Uh, Mike, are you there? Are you aware of the answer of that? Well, that might be, might be one of our developers that we need to get uh, on the line for that. Yeah, so um, I don't know specifically um, how to address that question. Um, I do know that uh, we have the ability to see into Hard Dollars database and have a, have a connection there so we can access um, the data points from Hard Dollar. Um, how those interact or what they do on our side um, would just depend on what it is they're trying to accomplish with that data. Um, so there is connectivity and we have the ability to import and export um, different data points along with quantities or units or other, um, other numeric properties with the data. But um, just have to look into that specific scenario. And, and John, I assume we have access to kind of who is asking the question, so maybe we can get back with them and have a more specific uh, discussion. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Well, hopefully it's a matter of moving this spark plug wire to that area and that spark plug wire to that area, but, but we can certainly find out. All right, next question. Um, with about time, would you be able to check in and check out a subcontractor? Yes. Is that your final answer? <laughs> yes, yes, that, yes, we're able to. Okay. You can also Thank track. You. There's a lot of things we can track with subs, but yes, absolutely. All right. Um, next question is, do you have a code and class for certified payroll projects? A code and class. Those are in quotes. I'm not sure if those are proper. Terms. Yeah, yeah, I would imagine they're a union contractor, and, and yes, absolutely. A lot of times the ERP system handles that, and we pass the time over, but we do also create uh, custom lists, as we call them, that tie back to the ERP system, where if those designations need to be overridden in the field, they could be done so, or they, if they need to be overridden in the office. But yeah, absolutely, we are, are very strong in the, in the union uh, sandbox, <laughs> and uh, very strong here in California, where unions pretty much rule. And uh, as well as you know, Minnesota and uh, Chicago or Illinois, um, uh, Pennsylvania areas where unions are very strong. So yeah, we do allow for uh, for union overrides or for classification or those codes to be overridden. Uh, of course, to be tracked. Uh, we also let the foreman in the field know if uh, who what what local people are from, things of that nature. We can also configure a lot of rules into the system for overtime um, uh, between different locals. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Again, that would probably need a lot more discussion behind it, but from what I understand of what they're asking, uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, and, and on as far as certified payroll, About Time can completely handle uh, feeding those needs and, and accommodating um, the different requirements that companies have. True, and that that's, you know can be different from state to state. Like uh, here in California, we need to export out the day of week, the date, the start, the stop, the lunch, uh, all the codes that were tracked throughout the day, uh, whether or not they were certified. So there's a little bit of configuring, but that all happens within our discovery process with the new customer when we're setting up the system with the project manager and the technical engineer and the account manager. But yeah, as Mike said, we can get that data out in the right format. All right, another question is, can you discuss how you charge your user license fees? Yeah, actually, that's extremely simple, and just to just take a very short time here, uh, we recently, um, well, not re so, so recently, it's been a, a, about a year, we changed our licensing structure. Uh, a lot of our competitors charge by the employees, by the devices that are in the field, uh, by all these different uh, modules and components. Uh, we keep it very simple. There's a one-time charge per employee that's being tracked. That's not necessarily a named seat, so if you let a, a, a person go and bring in a new hire, they just take over that seat and we feed that off from either the payroll service or the ERP system over you know, active employees and bring those over. So really, it's, it's a one-time fee for that. There's ongoing support and maintenance. There's, of course, setup and, and training and, and consulting, but, uh, but it's the, the actual licensing is very, very straightforward. 
All right, thank you. Um, here's another question. You only show iPhone, iPad, and Android products. Is this also available on laptops in the field? Yeah, it is. Um, actually, uh, to go through the whole list, we're on Android phones, Android tablets, all the versions of the iPhone, the iPod Touch, the iPad Mini, the iPad, Blackberry, uh, Windows tablets, laptops, netbooks, toughbooks, desktops, and I think that pretty much covers everything on, in the market, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, flip phones, uh, you know, there, there's no operating system on it, but virtually anything else uh, we're able to run on. All right, thank you. Let's see, is there a way to automate entry of materials in hard dollar as well? I believe that question's related to the timesheet data coming from the field in updating hard dollar. And I think the question is in regards to updating materials within hard dollar coming from that data feed as well. Boy, I, I don't think I could answer that one, John, can you? Or is that one we'll have to take offline? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not familiar enough to know, but I think that's the context is um, the flowing of material quantities um, being used to update hard dollar. Yeah, I guess we'll have to take that one offline, but let us know if we can help at all with answering that. All right. Um, so we will follow that up separately um, to the person that answered that or asked that question. Um, here's another question. Does the data of does the data of importing and exporting affect the storage of your computer? Meaning, does it fill uh, up if you're no, on a small no, device? no, no, no. No, because this is contained within our, 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 our SQL database, which is very scalable but operates within, you know, the confines of the database that's just, you know, laying over the top of your operating system. So, no, it doesn't go into, into your internal storage. Correct me if I'm wrong on that, Mike, but that's the way I've always understood it since being at about time. Yeah, it's a, it's a very minimal overhead, um, and, uh, you know, we have some extremely large companies running a lot of different divisions and a lot of data, thousands of employees, and and uh, don't don't see any kind of lag or um, or data build up um, even over years that has any kind of problem. And as I guess I could ask the question in terms of connect or disconnected mode when you're collecting the data on the device that hasn't had a chance to sync up yet. That's still a pretty minimal footprint, correct? It, it sure is. I mean, even if they're taking job site photos and filling out form data. Um, it's it's a pretty small footprint, and the actual um, app on the device. I've looked at my iPad recently, and you know my kids. They of course share my iPad. My daughter's five, and she has all her princess games and baking games and whatnot. And those are taking all my resources. <laughs> about time actually takes up about ten megabytes. So, and then I've got you know some of her apps that are like one point three gigabytes, and she, all she's doing is, is simulating baking a cake. So yeah, it's, it's a pretty small application. In the big scheme of it, okay. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, right. everything's kind of done in flat file format, so right. we're really just, um, aside from pictures or rich data, obviously those are controlled by the settings of the device, but when we sync that, uh, those, uh, like a JPEG or a video file, we actually do, um, we do compact those down before we transmit them, so we even minimize those to a degree um, so that they're not, not even uh, sending uh, large amounts of data back and forth. We're helping to minimize that within our app. All right, so we're basically at the hour mark of today's webinar. Um, we'll just take, I just saw one quick question come in. Um, if there are any others, last call. Uh, otherwise, we'll be putting up information about how to contact uh, either Hard Dollar or About Time Technologies. Um, we encourage you to have those deeper conversations. So the Final question uh, that is in the queue right now is, is the SQL database hosted on-premise or by about time? You, you know, I that's, believe that that's, might be. Go ahead. Oh, go, yeah, you know, uh, we have customers that, that host it separately, um, or, or we can look at, you know, hosting it through a, another provider. Uh, many of our customers do host that right on their own premise. They want their data secure. Uh, we open a secure part on their router, so our it just the data goes right into our database. There's no other stop point or 
it doesn't come through without time first. So it really depends on the security level that the, the, the company wants and if they want that hosted or not. So we can look at either option. All right. So those are all the questions in the queue right now. Definitely a good um, set of questions and hopefully good answers as well as part of this. Um, <laughs> I uh, appreciate everybody's questions here and interest. And as I mentioned, I'm just going to put up uh, as a final here the contact information, websites uh, for both obviously Hard Dollar and About Time Technologies, uh, which are on the screen right now. Um, as I mentioned and was asked in this um, session as well, we are recording today's uh, session. We will be sending a link to all of you so that you can walk through at your own pace, uh, rewind, replay, do whatever you like with the recording, share it with others. Um, but we do appreciate everybody who is here live. Um, any other things on your side, David? I think we're good to go. Thank you, John. All no, right. Thank well, you, thank you, you everyone. Thank you, everybody, and have a good uh, rest of the day. And stay tuned for the next uh, webinar that we host here.